While many advanced placement physics students are familiar with the topic of sound waves, most have not delved into the depth of the true applications that sound waves can be used, specifically underwater. These underwater sound waves are known as hydroacoustics. Hydroacoustics is the general term for the study and application of sound in water. Hydroacoustics, utilizing sonar technology, is most commonly used for detection, assessment, and monitoring of underwater physical and biological objects. The technology was developed around the beginning of the 19th century and has continued to have major influence on fields ranging from marine biology to oil and gas. Considering the majority of AP students at this point have already taken the AP test, most have probably flushed all physics concepts out of their mind. For this reason, it is important to review some of the basic topics that are fundamental to hydroacoustics. First off are the components of the wave. The wavelength is defined as the distance from one point on a wave to the corresponding next point on that wave. Next comes amplitude, which describes the distance from the middle of a wave to the peak or trough. Calculations upon determining what kind of waves are needed when collecting data for hydroacoustics rely heavily upon these characteristics of waves and their relationships. The other important aspect comes in the form of kinematics. Waves travel through water at varying velocities, which, when measured with time, can be used to determine the distance that an object is from a sound emitter. The equation to find this is d equals vt over 2. On the surface level, here's how it works. A sound emitter, in this case Bryce, <laughs> emits a loud sound wave into the water at a known angle and frequency. This sound wave travels in the same direction through the water until it hits a plant or animal, which creates an echo that bounces back towards the emitter. A listening device at the origin of the emitted sound is then able to calculate the distance that the echo was created. For example, if you were looking to find the depth of the ocean by using the average velocity of sound in water and measuring the time it takes, for a sound emitted at 10 degrees to rebound off of the seabed back to the surface, using the d equals vt over 2 equation is necessary. If d is solved for, basic properties of triangles and the cosine function can be used to triangulate the depth y of the seabed. So, why exactly is there an entire field dedicated purely to the study of sound in water? Well, the properties in each medium require entirely different methods of solving for certain variables. For example, in water, as the depth increases, the pressure within the water increases as well, resulting in an increase in the speed of sound. On average, sound travels in water at 1,484 meters per second, nearly 4.3 times as fast as they travel through air. Here's an example of an important equation to solving hydroacoustic problems. If three variables, temperature and degree Celsius, salinity in parts per thousand of the water, and depth of the water in meters are known, then this equation can be utilized to find an accurate estimation of the true speed of water at that depth. This equation was formulated based upon factors of water that may be significant at certain depths but become insignificant at lower depths, such as how temperature is only significant in the first three levels of depth since after that point sunlight cannot reach any deeper into the water and consequently temperature will remain constant down to the seabed. Here's an example of an equation being used to find the speed of sounds in water in an ocean that is 15 degrees Celsius, has a salinity of 50 parts per thousand, and is measured at a depth of 50 meters. After plugging in all nine of the A values and substituting in the temperature, salinity, and depth of the ocean, the equation on top is created. Below the line, you can see the equation in its simplified form, and after performing all the necessary calculations, the speed of water in this scenario is determined to be 1,525.3 meters per second. Being able to find the speed of sound is detrimental to fields that deal with hydroacoustics, such as in the seismic survey vessel shown. In this image, waves are emitted from a seismic survey vessel, which continues towards the seabed at an angle until, seabed, until the seabed reflects the waves back upwards towards the surface. Waves will run into the acoustic receivers that are trailing behind the boat, the time that was needed for the wave to be received can be used to determine the depth that the wave traveled. In seismic studies, this is important because sudden changes in sea depth, sea depth can give early warning to possible earthquake instances. 
A second function utilized by sonar technology emits sound waves in order to find populations of fish instead of the seabed. Fishing companies rely heavily upon this technology in order to successfully capture the maximum number of desired fish most efficiently. When using sonar technology, this is the image that is returned when the sound wave is emitted from the hydroacoustic device. The swim bladder of the fish, which is filled with air, can be seen in the picture and this image allows scientists to identify the species of the aquatic animal. In addition, scientists can also study the habitats and depths that these specific animals live in. A final function of hydroacoustics in which sound is emitted and received at an optimal depth in order to increase sound speed can be illustrated through the following video. Sound waves are created and move through the oceans. And when they hit a hydroacoustic station, they are registered by its hydrophones. Hydrophones are sensitive underwater microphones. They convert changes in water pressure into electrical signals. They are deployed at a depth where sound waves propagate most efficiently. As you can see, hydrophones are arranged in triplets. This helps us establish where the sound waves come from. There are cables on the seabed to transmit the signals. Depending on ocean floor topography, these cables can be up to 100 kilometers long. Near the shore, the cable is encased in protective layers and then led through a pipe to avoid the rough surf zone. Computers at the shore facility record the signal and prepare it for satellite transmission. Dish antennas transmit the data via satellites to the CTBTO in Vienna. All this is done automatically and takes only a few seconds. So here we see it again. Sound waves from an event are registered by the hydroacoustic sensors deep underwater, transmitted as electrical signals via cable to a shore facility, and then sent via satellite link to the CTBTO in Vienna where the data are analyzed to clarify the nature of the event.